just describe a little bit what was the intent of the report? Well, to your point, we look at oil and gas industry practices, and fracking itself really isn't the issue, but it's a related practice of injecting wastewater deep underground. So when you produce oil and gas, whether you're talking about a conventional well or a well that's been fracked, you also happen to produce a lot of water in addition to the oil and gas. Uh, and we're talking about large volumes here. Sometimes you get 10 times more water than you do oil and gas out of a particular well. So the question is, what do you do with all of that water? Well, the, the, the practice of the industry in most parts of the U.S. has been to drill a separate well and pump all of that water underground. And that injection of that uh, wastewater is what uh, seems to be related to the earthquakes. Rob, tell us the geographic areas that are covered in the report. That's right. Well, uh, certainly uh, Oklahoma, Texas, those are hot spots right now. But it's really in areas where you're looking at oil and gas activity generally. So in Oklahoma specifically, the regulators are looking at this industry practice. They are, they are also doing that in Texas. And so we have, uh, you know, we have this new sort of activity that's coming under the the potential scope of regulators. So in Oklahoma, in Texas, you could technically start withdrawing permits for wastewater injection if the regulators ultimately decide that there's an issue here. And there's mounting evidence. There's new academic studies. There's studies from uh, scientists at the uh, U.S. Geological Survey that really make this connection. Um, uh, Robin, just uh, showing fracking and earthquakes in Oklahoma, water injections uh, and number of uh, three plus magnitude earthquakes. Do these earthquakes pose any danger to inhabitants? Uh, certainly there is potential for damage. When you look at Oklahoma, they've had 250 earthquakes in Q1 of this year. They had almost 500 earthquakes last year that were greater than a 3.0 uh, scale. And, uh, you know, that, that's enough to potentially cause, uh, cause some harm. And if you go back over time, uh, there were almost uh, no earthquakes in the area. So there really is a link between where you see these wastewater injection wells and where you're experiencing some of the earthquakes. And in a lot of cases, uh, we're essentially discovering faults that we didn't know existed in the past. What about wastewater and contamination? Yeah, so I mean, that's why the wastewater is essentially being injected deep underground. Uh, you c the alternative is that you could ultimately move towards more wastewater recycling, but uh, cleaning up the water is an expensive uh, uh, practice. So in most parts of the country, that's simply just not the, uh, the path we're taking right now, but th that's one potential regulatory solution. Lawsuits, Rob? Lawsuits are out there. We're seeing those heat up. Um, you know, n none of the lawsuits have uh, been successful yet. Uh, there have been some that have settled out of court, but um, this is a potential liability for uh, some of the producers and some of the folks who operate these wastewater disposal wells. Uh, we're certainly seeing folks lawyer up, and um, you know this this is the great story of our time. You know we've had the uh, shale energy revolution occurring here in the U.S., and so far it's it's really not fallen under any significant. Um, regulatory clawback, but this is an issue that, that we're seeing heat, heat up, and that's why we're following it from a uh, sort of industry company perspective. Rob, increased seismic activity, is that necessarily a bad thing? <laughs> well, it's, energy is always about trade-offs, so, um, you know, I think, uh, I, I, I don't think you're going to find anyone who's sort of going to be pro-earthquake, but uh, you know, we have a lot of resource in the ground, and, you know, maybe small trimmers might be acceptable. That might be the trade-off we're willing to make as a society. And again, it's, you know, it's ultimately not going to be my call. It's going to be the folks who are regulating the industry in Oklahoma, Texas, who, who will make that, uh, who, who do that calculus. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised though, if we see increased interest in the issue here in Washington as well. I mean, this, this, is a, this is a big industry issue that's, uh, that, that we'll see playing out in the policy space uh, over the next few years. And Rob Barnett, how can people get a hold of this new report? 
It's available on the terminal for uh, Bloomberg Intelligence customers. All right. One of